Playing Switch games on your PC is easy, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Ryubin Switch emulator, so let's get started. First off, it's recommended to have at least 8GB of RAM to avoid choppy gameplay or crashes. Not every game is perfect, but a large majority of them should play nicely with this emulator. And on top of setting up the games, I'm going to show you how to install keys, firmware, set up game mods, install updates, DLC, and more. So to start off, just go and type Ryubin in google or any search engine and the first link that should come up is the github go ahead and click it first thing you'll notice it is titled ryubing but is called ryujinx right here ryujinx was discontinued as the creator was forced to abandon the project so this is basically a fork of ryujinx created by green dev you can read more on this page or uh, just scroll down and we're gonna go and find stable releases click on that it should take you over here and then on the right side under releases click the 1.2.86 or whichever version that it is at the time of watching the video setup will be the same you'll see the latest version you can read the change log I do suggest reading it as sometimes it has some pretty useful information especially after a switch firmware update if the latest firmware works with it but scroll down and you'll see all of these files right here. And I'm gonna be setting mine up on Windows, so I'm gonna grab the WinX64 zip file, click on it, and it should download a zip file, which will need to be extracted. But once you have that, you can minimize and go ahead and open up your downloads. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You can either right click and hit extract all and extract. And that'll open the extracted file and you'll have it right there you can delete the zip file or you can just open the zip file and grab the published folder and drag it onto your desktop or wherever you want on your computer now personally I have a hard drive called smash like I can open it up I have a bunch of other emulators set up but this is where I put everything for my emulators again you can place it wherever you want so I'm gonna place it in my emulators folder grab the publish folder and drag it inside and that's it. You can delete the zip file. And as long as you have that published folder, you can delete the extracted file here. And the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you a trick. So go into publish, and this is all your Ryujinx or Ryubing files. This exe file is the one we want. So you don't have to go into this folder every time you wanna play. So we're gonna right click and create a shortcut. Show more options, create shortcut. And here it is. So now you have a shortcut, you can place it wherever you want on your computer. I'm gonna hit Control X and cut, and go back to the root of my hard drive and hit Control V to paste. I'm gonna rename it, just Ryujinx, or you can call it Ryubin if you want, but it's up to you. And now this file will load the actual emulator. So let's go ahead and do that. Double click, the console screen will open up, but that's okay, and then the actual emulator opens up next. Now because I've ran Ryujinx on my computer before, I have firmware version 18 in there, and I didn't get any prompts that I need my keys. I'll quickly show you, I have keys and firmware right here. So you need your prod.keys and title.keys. Uh, let's go ahead and install those. So go in the top left to actions and install keys and click the top one. And now we're just gonna navigate to where we have our keys. So mine, games, files, NX keys, firmware. Now, if you're wondering where to get these, I backed mine up from my modded switch. There's other ways, but I can't show you how to do that on the video. Otherwise, they will strike it down. So you're on your own for that one. I apologize, but it's really not that hard. I'm gonna click my prod.keys and open. Install keys, press yes and successfully installed. Hit OK. Next up, we're gonna go back to Actions and install our firmware. So install firmware from XCI or ZIP, and mine is right here, either or. I'm gonna click my ZIP file, open, install firmware 18.1. Now, the reason I have 18 instead of 19, I still haven't backed up my updated one, 19, but you can really use any firmware. Press yes to continue and successfully installed 18.10 it tells you the version in the bottom right so now that we have those installed now is time to set up our games and i'm not sure if any of you noticed but my video has not had any squeaks from my chair which brings me to the sponsor of today's video flexi spot i've upgraded to their c7 ergonomic office chair and i'm gonna be honest guys it's the best chair i've ever owned i was in dire need of a new chair and after setting this thing up and using it for the first few weeks i'll never want to go back to a basic gaming chair and I'm sure my regular viewers are glad they won't have to listen to this god-awful squeaking during my live streams anymore. 
It's extremely comfortable and even helps me with my posture when I'm editing or gaming for hours. I unboxed it and assembled it all in about 30 minutes with no extra tools. It does come with mesh seating as well, but I opted for the foam cushion, which I have zero regrets. The lumbar support it offers with the adapting lower back section is amazing and you can set it to move with your body or lock it in place. And the adaptability to your body does not stop there either. You can adjust the height of the chair as well as the armrests, add forward seat tilt, recline it up to 128 degrees, and it even comes with a built-in footrest. But as you can see, the adjustment options are plentiful and can adjust to literally any body type. So if you're looking to get a new office or gaming chair, the FlexiSpot C7 is definitely a contender you should at least look into. It's 100% worth it to invest in a chair that has your body's longevity in mind, and if you're interested, I'll have a link in the description for you to check it out. You can use my code to get $50 off. And don't worry, they do have a 30-day return policy if it's not as good as you expected, but I don't think you'll be disappointed. Thanks again to FlexiSpot for sending me the chair. Now let's get back to the video. All right, now let's set up our games. So go to Options, Settings, and you should see game directories right here. We'll click add. And now you're gonna navigate to that folder. So mine is smash like, games files. So you just select the folder that you have your games in. Select the folder, press apply, press okay. And you should see your games inside. And if you're wondering what file type they need to be, I'll quickly show you my games. And just for the record, I do own all of these in a physical copy. I backed them up with my modded switch, uh, but mine are all XCI, NSP also work. I don't recommend pirating switch games either. It's risky and Nintendo still profits from those games and they probably still will continuing into the Switch 2 era as it'll have backward compatibility and Nintendo likes money. So yeah, but you know what? To each their own, it doesn't bother me if you do. I personally don't and I don't recommend yeah, that is the file types and you should have your game set up there, but we're not done yet. Now is DLC and updates. So right now it is 1.7.1. We're going to change that. I have a newer update. I'm going to go to file, load title updates from folder. My, I have mine in updates DLC. We're going to select the folder itself. One new updates added. As you can see, I now have 3.0.1. That's the only update I had in that folder. Now, if you would prefer installing them a different way, you can also right click and hit manage title updates, but you can also click add and then navigate to your updates. So I have mine right there. It is an NSP file also backed up from my modded switch and then press open. It'll be in here. Make sure it's selected and press save. So that's another option. Now the DLC, it's the same way as that second update option. Right click and go to manage DLC. And here we're going to click add. Open up the folder where you have your DLC and select it and press open. One new downloadable content added right there. Click on it, make sure that blue rectangle thing is right there. That means it's selected. Press save and you should now have the DLC. Next up, let's go into the settings and set up a controller in order to play it. So you can use any Bluetooth controller that connects to your PC, including Joy-Cons. Go into options, settings, go to input in the top hotbar. And here you can choose your input device. So I don't have one connected yet. Let me do that. Pro controller, I'm connecting it right now. So once it's connected, you'll be able to select it in input device, Nintendo Switch Pro controller. And if you don't have any controller and you wanna use keyboard like a madman, I mean, all power to you, but that, I, I don't think I'd be able to play games like, like that personally, being a console person. <laughs> but yeah, you can use keyboard. Uh, you can select that, but just select the controller you want to use and it should automatically map. You can turn motion on or off. You can turn your rumble on or off here as well, or your LEDs. So if you want to change your button mapping, um, all you do is select the button in the settings here and then click that button on your controller that you want it to be. So I'll change this to B to show you. So press B and now it is B for the A button, but I don't want that. So I'll change it back to A. If you want to set up two controllers, Go under player and select two. Make sure you press yes to save those settings we just changed. And then go to player two. Change your input device, you can keyboard. Um, if you have Joy-Cons and you connected them to your PC, you can change the controller type. So right here, uh, you can Joy-Con pair or a single left Joy-Con or single right Joy-Con. So you can select that as well. Uh, but once you've done all your controller settings, click apply. And now under user in interface, I'll quickly show you, you can change the theme. You can do light theme or dark. I'm going to leave mine on dark, but you just have to hit apply to change it. 
but now go to graphics and we'll just make sure that we have the best for what we want. So the ideal graphics backend is Vulkan. OpenGL, if your computer can't handle Vulkan, you can try it, but Vulkan will give you a better experience for sure. So select Vulkan, and if you're unsure about any of these settings, you can hover and it'll give you a little explanation, which is really nice. For GPU, if you have a dedicated graphics card, make sure it's selected here. So that's my graphics card here. You can change the resolution scale if you have a better computer and I'm pretty happy with 1080p. If you're wondering why there's two numbers, the 720 is handheld mode and 1080 is docked mode. Go back into input and in the bottom left, it should already be checked, but docked mode, make sure it's checked for that second number on the resolution. And go back to graphics. For anti-aliasing, just make sure it's on one of the SMAAs. I'll do medium. And again, if one of these settings causes issues with the games, just uh, change it to something more reasonable for your computer. But SMAA will help smooth your rendering. You can keep it on bilinear, auto, aspect ratio, everything else is pretty good. But again, if you are changing these settings, settings and your games do not run well, just change them back to default and start testing which ones are okay to make your games run the best for your computer. Once you have that, click apply. And now I'll show you how to set up game mods. So I already have some, but I'll show you where to get them as well. Just go to Google and type the game name plus game banana. So in this case, Jamboree Game Banana, it'll take you here. If you want Gold Egg Yoshi, click on the mod, scroll down and find the manual download. I would suggest reading about the mod first though. And then you can go and download the actual mod and it should be a ROM FS file or an EXE FS file. And that is what you want. It can be in a folder with the mod name. So bang, I got Gold Yoshi there as well as an option. You can place your mod anywhere on your computer but I have all mine on my hard drive in this folder and they do have to be extracted as well. And back in the emulator, now that you have the game mod, right click on the game and press manage mods, click add, and now navigate to where your folder is, and then you can highlight as many as you want. So I have Fast On Board, Funky Kong, and Gold Yoshi. Select those, and now there are options in there. You don't have to run all of them at once, just if you don't want Fast On Board, click it, and you only have those two. Click save. And now your game will load with those mods. If you don't want to run them with the mods, go back into manage mods and turn them off. Click save. Now it's vanilla. I'll quickly do the same thing with Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Manage mods. CTGB Deluxe is already in there. I'm good. Press save. And now you know how to play your mods, which is personally the main reason I use emulators. Because then you can use mods safely without worrying about getting banned by Nintendo. Now we have it totally set up. I'll show you a couple tricks. If not, most of these are playable. If we hover over it, it'll give you a summary of how the compatibility is. So in Jamboree, boots and goes in game, but suffers from one or more of the following crashes, deadlock GPU. So it gives you an idea of how the game will actually play. You can change the icon from a list to this, which looks pretty cool. You can change the size, you can show the names. So there's just some customization stuff you can also do. So just double click to load your game and it'll start. The first boot might take a while to compile shaders and everything. 